Hello and welcome to our first Idea O'Clock session. So my name is Ida Jimenez and I have the absolute honor and pleasure here to be able to work with the Buncee team and the Buncee community to really just be able to connect with educators and, you know, really just share different ideas. And that's kind of how we can how we've come to convene today. Um, but enough about me. So Sue, do you want to introduce yourself here? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sue John. You can also call me Sue or Buncy Sue, as it shows right here. Um, I'm usually in the background with all of these live stream things, you know, doing the controlling and everything like that. But it's awesome to be on the screen with you guys and being part of the conversation. So I'm really excited to, uh, you know, kick off the first session of Idea Clock. <laughs> and I was going to pass the mic down to Shannon so that she can introduce herself as well. Yeah, thank you. I am so excited to be here with you two and everybody who is watching. And this is something that we've talked about for a while. And so I'm really excited to get to share today and tell what we've been up to since we've been back to school. So thank you guys for coming. Yeah, it's all very exciting. Um, and actually, I just wanted to go over, you know, how the idea of Idea Clock came to be. So when we first started doing virtual conferences and online meetups and things like that with uh, our uh, Creative Beginnings event, um, our you know community days and events held in India, Malaysia, and everywhere, Middle East, um, we there were so many great ideas from all different speakers. And, you know, our feedback of for, for those sessions were, you know, this is really amazing and I love these ideas, but, you know, I just want to see how I can start creating and how I can start implementing these ideas to classrooms. So the idea behind Idea Clock here is to go over those steps, you know, those details of how these ideas are made, you know, how you can start creating. Um, and so this is the idea behind Idea Clock. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, on that note, so obviously we have our guest speaker today. Our first one to kick us off is Shannon. Um, but Shannon, you have so many different ideas. And I think that's what's so inspirational for me. So the first idea, I know that we were talking a little bit about like just different thoughts and thinking about like this new back to school year kind of uh, feel that we have, mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy, right? We're all in new territory. Nobody knows exactly what to do. And so our kids in real true senses are actually kind of blessed to really experience like this sort of new wave of the world that we find ourselves in. So I know your thought was a little bit more about, you know, what about if we started documenting, you know, this experience and what it is. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about this idea, Shannon? Yeah, definitely. I am really excited. And I'm, I have a few slides to share just to kind of share um, what we're doing and to show you. And I wanted to also share my Twitter and my blog, just in case you have any questions too. I'm always happy to help, but I'm a teacher librarian in Van Meter, Iowa, and I get the pleasure of working with preschool to 12th grade at our school. And we love kicking the year off always with Buncee. Uh, we've been back to school now for about four weeks. Um, we have had just lots of amazing things going on within our school, but a big part of it was wrapped around how the kids are creating their journals and we're creating them virtually in Buncee. And kind of the thought process behind this was we've used Buncee for a few years now with their journaling, but we really wanted to make sure that we started this at the beginning of the year. So then they have this journal to go to if they're at school or if we're at home or we have kids who are virtually learning or even in a blended situation. And so we want to make sure that we give kids a place to document what they're going through and the things that they love. And I think the thing that really shines through, you know, just looking at some of these pictures of what our kids are creating is that even though we're in a pandemic and we're in a situation where we all have our little masks on like the kids have, it's like they really, it's their kids and they wanna talk about the things that they love. And I think giving them a place to showcase what they're going through, you know, if it's taking a picture of themselves and putting it into their Buncee and sharing the things that they love and sharing what events maybe they're being part of. It's a great way though to just let them be kids and tell their story. And 
we've had a lot of great events too, like Dot Day was this week. And so sharing those things, how they're creating, you know, their dots or making their mark on the world. And I think this statement, you know, these things that the kids, these are second graders, things that they were saying about what they wanted to do. We just have to remember again that we're giving them a place to talk about what they're passionate about. So I wanted to share today just a little bit about how our kids are doing that, but also to show you how easy it is to have your kids create their own journals too. So when we go into Buncee, Buncee has been so amazing at creating just all kinds of cool templates for us. And when kids go in and they start, and I'm gonna share a few directions too um, after we share some slides, but when you go in and you start creating, you can select different templates. And that's one of the choices that kids have to be able to select a template, kind of like what my kids did, or even one specifically around remote learning that lets them start filling in you know, their journal and giving them just some clues too, which I love because maybe they're doing this with a family member or maybe they're even doing it by themselves. And so giving them some prompts on how they can create it. They can also select just tons of backgrounds. And I was so excited today because Buncee has added a lot of new ones and it gives them a place to just kick off, you know, and start their journals and so many different ways. If they're your little ones all the way up to your high school kids. And I think it's really great because it gives them something too to really connect to what they love. And so something for everyone, a place for them to put their thoughts and all about me. But I think the big thing that we have to remember is that it is their space. Another fun idea would be, these are kind of like a time capsule too, right? Like they're sharing all of the events that are happening or things that are going on in their lives. Maybe it's things that are happening um, at home or at school, how they're learning. And it also gives them a spot, you know, Buncee, you can add your voice and video. So I love this because it really can become not only a place that they share their picture, but maybe they're even sharing, you know, what's happening within their family. They're inviting their family or friends to even add to their Buncee journals too. And that was an idea that one of our little ones um, did today. And it was so great because she was even interviewing just her friends because she wanted them to be part of her journal as well. Now, when they start their journal and they have a front cover, they can add then you know anything to it from text to sayings, to stickers, to animations. And again, Buncee has been so amazing at creating just all kinds of little stickers that prompt them when they're creating their journal as well. I also had a great surprise today. And when I got home, I even had one from my little friend Tenley. And this is a way too that kids can share when they're finished and just kind of a way to kick off their journal. They can share them with their teachers. They could share them with their parents and even a friend. And I love how Buncee's come to you because it's in kind of a little envelope and invite and makes it really fun to just pop that out to see what they're creating. And again, putting them together in a place, and this is something I think that is so important when we're in the classroom, but even when we're with our remote learners. And so if we have a spot, and this is just an example of a Buncee board, where you can bring all your Buncees together, it gives another place for your kids to stay connected. And so my kids are lucky because we're together in the classroom. And so we did a lot of gallery walking when we created Buncees and a lot of sharing with their elbow partners. But sharing something like a Buncee board, especially when you're remote, I think is so important because again, it gives them a place to stay connected to their pals. And so we're going to take some questions and I'm going to stop sharing this tab. I'm going to take some questions and then we'll go in and do a little creating in Buncee. Yeah. Yeah. So in the meantime, folks, feel free to drop any of your questions. But I have to say, Shannon, I mean, what I love about this idea is just thinking about the place that we're in. It's going to be amazing for our students to also just, you know, they might take it as a journal for right now. But imagine being able to look at this, you know, one year later, five years later, and then realize that you are really in a different time zone. So being able to document any of those artifacts, also, just like you said, 
you know, recording your own audio, sharing your own voice, they'll be able to look back and realize it's a unique moment in our time. Like I didn't experience it, you didn't experience it. So it's gonna be an amazing um, way, but yeah. It's a it's a really cool idea. So in the meantime, I we don't have questions yet, but I'd love to be able to see how you you yeah. actually create these journals. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again, and I think like what you said as well. You know, having a place where kids, you know, today it really it really hits home when you see kids create these and you see all the pictures of them with their masks on, or maybe they're looking things up like they would go to the internet and try to add things or things that they have heard, or even like the kids are taking pictures of like the hand washing posters and putting them in there, like all kinds of things that, you know, is something that they remember, but it's a place of their memories of what they remember mm -hmm. about this time. And so I think that's something that is really, really important for us to remember and a place to give them. So I'm going to show you how to create these buncees. And when I go into a classroom, just a little tip on when you're teaching this to your kids is... Absolutely, Shannon. Could I interrupt you for one second? Yes. Yeah. So we actually had a question from someone who's watching on Facebook who asked, did that student send you the buncee through buncee or directly from their email? They sent it through buncee. Yeah, um, and what it actually does is there's the ability to share Buncees through Buncee to someone else's email. So how that works is you just type in their emails on the share button and uh, it, it has this really amazing animation where it kind of looks like the Buncee is getting opened up from an envelope and it's really beautiful and it's a great way to send out like RSVPs or any like Buncee that you're proud of that you want to share with your teacher or your you know family members or anyone like that. So. Yeah, so sharing by email is also a great way to share yeah. with you as well. Yeah, I love getting those. I was so happy today when I got it. And so <laughs> and I'll show I'll show you guys how to do that too. So when I go and I present to my kids and, and this is a new project, or even if it's the beginning of the year and they've already used Muncie, I walk them through this a lot like how I'm going to walk you through this tonight. And I start from the beginning, even if they are kids that have used Muncie a lot, I just want to make sure that they're successful, especially as we kick off the year. And so they would go to create a new Muncie. And this pops up that lets you either start from scratch or select a template. Now today there were several templates that were added for journaling. And so those pop up at the top. And as it was great because this week there was so many like for dot day. And so it was really fun. But we can also go over here and we can let's see if any pop up sometimes. The kids get really lucky and find exactly what they need right away. And then other times they will go. I'm Shannon, I think um, we actually have to retry sharing your screen again because I actually don't see any movement on it. Yeah, it's the same on my side as well. Okay. It says that it's, it says it's sharing. So let's try again. So you guys didn't see any of that? Not yet, but I know there's still some magic to happen. <laughs> so we actually saw the Buncee dashboard, but once you click, you know, create something new, it opens it up in another tab. So right, there you go. Okay, I see it now. <laughs> that might be kind of interesting. So now, what about now? We see a journal. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, <laughs> so we'll just stay right here. So if I selected this template, then I can then start adding what I want to it. I can also see that there is another page. And so if kids selected this, they would have that set up where they could then start entering their information. Now, when they are in their journal and they want to make it their own, we go over here to the little plus sign on the right hand side. And we bring it up where we can add anything from text to animations to stickers. Kids love web images. They can add their own photo and even upload things, which is a really, I think, important part of Buncee because they can upload things that they have created or even from you know pictures that they have taken. And so 
what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add my name. Actually, Shannon, I'm so sorry to interrupt you again, but I just wanted to hop in here. Um, so right now, so everything is kind of already made, right? When you when we saw this tab, um, we had the re we had the remote learning journal already in place. You know, everything was kind of already there. So I just wanted to share with all of with everyone who's watching. Um, you know, some of the ways to kind of get to this template is by. Uh, when you create a new Buncee and you browse through the templates or their categories, um, you can find readily, you know, ready to use templates, whether it's journals or, you know, language learning or, uh, or thank you cards or birthday cards, anything like that. Anything you want to create, if you just type it into the search bar, um, you, you, will, you will be able to find, you know, ready to create or ready to edit or ready to share Buncees. Uh, so it's a great way to, you know, browse through ideas or use them for your lessons or anything like that. So I just wanted to drop that in there as well. <laughs> yeah. And I, when we, when I was, I hope you guys saw that when I was at the beginning and I did that. And so that's what I did was I typed in journal, mm -hmm. came up with the templates and chose one. Can you guys still see my screen? Yes. I can see, we can see. Yeah, now we see it. I'm, we like, see I'm like, okay. All right, so on here then, and we had some kids, especially older kids that chose some of these and were able then to, if they were remote learning at home, they were able then to add their name to it and then add what they wanted to. Now, if I go, I'm probably gonna lose my screen though now. Can you guys see my new screen? We do not yet. Uh, we still see the journal. Okay, so let me, I'm going to start from scratch, and then I'm going to share my screen. They tell me that this isn't my fault, so hopefully <laughs> you guys can all see what I'm going to share. Can you see this? Yes, we see. Okay. A C. okay, so this is how, you know, even though you can choose the template, this is how my kids created the ones that we created today. And because we wanted them to all use that template that let them add like the little um, things within the boxes, we went to just a plain Buncee and they then were going to just add the background that I had up on the board. And so on this, when you just select to start from scratch, you can add a template, kind of like what we did in the beginning where we searched the templates and look for one that fit. You can also change the background and then add your items. And so when they click on change a background, there are lots of journal ideas and they can even type in journal and journal book and they come up with just a lot from the keyword searches. And then the ones that we use, the kids just scroll down a little bit to find these that have the little spaces where they can add their different items to it. And I love these. I think they're just so much fun and a great way to start just a Buncee. And so when they're adding all of their items, they can look for the things that they want by typing in search. I had a pig because I really like pigs. They're one of my favorite animals. And so you select that and then you can shrink it down and add it to your box. They can also go on to the internet to web image and type in something that they want to search for. I'm going to search for Iowa and find this great picture of some fields and I'm going to highlight it and add it to my Buncee. I think one of the biggest things for kids when you start um, teaching with Buncee and just show them how to use it is using these little dots to shrink or change the size or make it bigger of your picture. And so that is a big thing for our kids to be able to kind of practice those skills too. So this was a good way to start out because they had to add a lot of things to fill up these spots. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to add a little text and again, a little practice, especially with your littles, but they sure do a great job. And if you show them a couple times and give them some prompts in how they can change the font or change the color or change the size, it's really one thing that they need 
you know, to have this practice to be able to create using Buncee. And so they keep going, they keep coming over here, searching for what they want, putting their picture in, they can add a video if they would like. They love the little emojis. And one thing too, like one suggestion when you're showing kids this is, you know, going to something like the emojis, remember whatever topic you go to, there's this great search bar too over on the side that lets you dig down into kind of the different categories. So they can use this to search, especially that visual search is so important for our little ones but they can also type up here in the search box what they're looking for too. And so my kids really like to use these over on the side because they can find some that they want to use and then add them into their fancy. Shannon, I actually had a question. Yes. So what are some good journal prompts from your experience um, that your students really loved or gained you know, valuable lessons from? So to ask that again. So what are some examples of journal prompts? So for example, I saw that uh, your students created a similar bunsi at the beginning of your presentation. Um, so what were so what was the journal prompt that kind of led them to create a bunsi that looks like this? Is it more about, oh, like I wanna share what, what I like, or I just wanna share you know, where I'm from or anything like that? In this one, they're just creating their like grade level Buncee. And so they're adding the things that are all about them. Got and it. so this is one. And then their second journal prompt yesterday was all about dot day. Mm -hmm. um, today, one of their journal um, prompts was how they're gonna make their mark on the world again for dot day. And then we let them in a few classes just write what they wanted to write about because it was the beginning, but I mean, a journal prompt could be anything around an event or a certain day or something that they're learning or they can do it at home. We have, you know, a lot of our virtual learners at home. And so they're using Buncee to journal about what they're learning about or what they're you know, doing with their families. Um, we used it a lot during even the spring when everybody was at home. And it can even be just an open-ended prompt. Maybe they go into like Pebble Go and they research mm -hmm. and then they write about what they're learning in Pebble Go or an ebook or something that they're learning within their class. And so it can be over absolutely anything. And I love to just to, you know, give them a place where they can just really write about their own interests and passions too. Yeah, one of my favorite um, ones that I've seen is actually, you know, writing a letter to yourself to the future. Yeah. Uh, to your future self. I mean, it's a great way for a student to also, especially during this time, to reflect on themselves. You know, what the situation is and think positive really about what lies ahead. And then it'll be an amazing experience for them to also just be able to revisit that Buncee um, later. I think so too. And they love even looking back, like, even after like a week or so, like kids love being able just to look back and even make, you know, some changes and add things to the ones that they have already made, even if it was, you know, a week ago or a month ago, but, you know, sharing those thoughts and being able to, you know, pull things from even their past and, and put it into ones that they're working on is really important to kids. Yeah. And you actually have a question on it. Um, so someone's um, interested to know, you know, as you got, you have your students creating their journal, um, do you have them keep just one journal and then add more pages to that same journal on that Buncee or do you have yes. them create separate? Yeah. So what we did and we started this actually last year um, around Pebble Go and our second graders created Pebble Go journals. And that was kind of how this whole idea, the year before we had kids that were using um, Buncee in our middle school for journaling, and they used it more as like a writing platform and you know creating Buncees that were around kind of their creative writing. Um, but last year when we started using it with Buncee, it was so much fun because they wrote about all the things that they researched and they just had a prompt or two every week. 
and they used the same one. And so at the end of the year, they had a Buncee with, you know, dozens and dozens of pages about what they were learning and researching in Pebble Go. And so it's neat to be wow. able just to have them, you know, share in the same one um, what they're doing. And of course, we use Buncee for a lot of things. And so sometimes the kids, you know, if they ask, like, maybe they want to make even just a page and they want to make something special. We had some kids yesterday that did that, wanted to make like that day posters. And I think the neat thing to remember is that we can always, you know, clip those pages and add them then to our big Buncee. And with a little help, you know, with your kids, you'll able to do that too with um, having them share those or having them like clip the pages or put those other pages into their journals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, also, um, cool other fact is that uh, for those that don't know it, Buncee also live updates. So as a student creates it, you'll also be able to see any updates or changes as, um, you know, the Buncee is made. So you don't have to worry about having so many different URLs. Yeah, and that that is a huge thing for um, kids. And I think how easy it is to have them log in, you know, with their Google for our kids is just so nice because we know that they can get there no matter where they're at. And we had one little boy today that I guess that he's going on vacation and he wanted to make sure that it would work when he was also on vacation. And so he must be going to journal about his vacation too, but it's important to, for kids to be able to have that easy access to things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it looks like we're almost close on time here or a little bit over, but I really want to see how you share that Buncee as yeah. an email. So you want to make sure up here on the top that you give it a title and you're, it will prompt you if you don't. And so the kids know that they will have to put a title and then click over here on the share where they can share in different ways, either with, you know, by a code or an email or share with Buncee. Um, users, so it makes it really easy. But this little email button here, when they click on send email, they can either add a new email or choose one that they already have. And so it makes it really easy for the kids to just type in an email, which is what our little friend did. And you can give it a first and last name if you want, but you don't have to. And then they add that and then it sends it to them when you click on next. You can even add a message and click on send. And now we have sent that in an email. So it makes it that easy. And so, and parents love getting those emails. So it is a good way to share with them as well. So we didn't actually get to see the last parts, but I did want to say, do you want to actually share your screen for your presentation? Because I know how you have a picture of the envelope and how that actually yes. works. Yes. Okay. Let me see. Yeah. So I actually share our um, ambassador newsletters on the Buncee because I love the envelope feature because it also gives it a personalized touch. I mean, imagine getting thousands of emails a day. And then sometimes you just want one that's like a positive feeling. It's very like just nice and um, really just friendly. Yeah. So you can yeah, just, just like that. So yeah. I see, is that a student of yours that actually shared this Buncee? Yep, Miss Tenley in second grade. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Yeah, I, so it looks just like that as your inbox, right? Yes, just like that. That's my inbox. So it's so it was so fun to get that, and I think that is just so much fun for for families too. And so it is a good thing to show kids to that feature, I think when they start, even if they're your little ones, because they just really enjoy sharing those with their teachers or families. Yeah. And then other fun fact, I'm just going to add it here is that um, I don't know if you saw the email status. So as you send a Buncee as an email, what you may not have known is that you can actually check the email status of that Buncee, which means that let's say you decide to send your journal and give it as an activity, as an assignment to your kids. If you send it out to your kids, you can actually see if they clicked on it, if they opened it, or if it was bounced, deferred, et cetera. So that at that point, you also are really up in the know with you know what's going on with that communication between you and your kids. Um, so that's an added bonus on that email feature too. I like that for RSVPs because like if you have like parent teacher night or book fair or something like that, you can see too and then check in with those people who maybe haven't um, opened it up. So it's a good feature. 
Yeah, definitely. Well, honestly, that was a really great, you know, sort of summary here about your ideas. I love the thought of just, I mean, personally, I love just documenting. I actually started my entire career working with uh, e-portfolios. I think it's such an important thing for people or kids to be able to really just work with, because I think the big importance for me, at least, or my takeaway is that it's a way for you to have your students build that identity. And as yeah. they build that identity, it's like you said in the beginning, you can share your voice, you can build those artifacts and then have them keep that really as their legacy. So imagine being a first grader, creating your Bunsies, right? Or even as a high school student going off to college, it's really that artifact of your life. So it's your legacy and you can almost think of your Bunsie as your legacy in that way. And yeah, so honestly, thank you for all of those different ideas. Um, I'm gonna share just one last question. Um, so someone asked, do the students create their own account or do you share an educator code? Um, so I'll be able to answer that actually, but um, in order for your students to be able to create Buncees, they definitely have to have an account um, to be able to get started and create. Um, but yeah, so um, any other questions, folks? I really enjoyed learning about your thoughts, but I mean, honestly, you're such an inspiration to me. You really can go hours and hours, at least in my perspective, with all of the different ideas that you do. So it's amazing. Your students are really blessed to be able to have like all the creative opportunities to be able to collaborate with you. Well, and we're blessed to have Buncee too. So <laughs> today I said to a new teacher, it was her first time learning about it, second grade teacher. And I said, Buncee is really like our one-stop shop. And I think that's a huge thing to remember because we can use it for so many different things. And so thank you guys too. No, thank you. Um, yeah, so um, that almost just concludes our session here. So um, thank you so much for really just sharing your thoughts, your ideas, and really that's kind of the spirit of what we were looking to do with Idea Clock, where you know every week as we tune in, our hope is that another guest educator will be able to share their thoughts, their ideas, and then in that way, obviously, we learn together. Um, so by sharing it, we'll be able to kind of learn those like awesome experiences that we could bring back to our kids too. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much, Shannon. Um, so what you'll notice on the bottom of the screen here is that we do have a feedback form. So please do you know fill it in, take a moment, share your thoughts with us, um, and what really you would actually like to learn for next session. Um, for the upcoming sessions, rather. Um, I actually, have, I actually yeah. think that we're going to have so many more idea clock sessions because with these questions coming in from the viewers, these are really good questions. Like we covered journals and time capsules today, as well as the email features. There's so many ideas to talk about, and there's really so many ways to use Funsy that you know really benefits a lot of people. So I really hope you know. If you want to see more of Idea Clock, <laughs> fill out the feedback form and uh, we can continue doing it. You know, you can tune in on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. And we will be also doing this next week as well. So uh, tune in for another Idea Clock where we will be covering more ideas. <laughs> yes, and thank you, Shannon. Anything else you'd like to share, Shannon, before we tune off here? No, let me know if anybody has any questions or need help or if you want some examples to share i'm always happy to help so thanks again for joining us yeah and actually just before we close here someone actually just shared it was a perfect way to share the journaling idea so yes thank you shannon for everything yeah you're welcome all right well thanks so much everyone we'll see you next week um, for our next session with uh, Amy Storer, actually sharing a little bit more about how to use Buncee as an instructional coach. So tune in and we'll see you there. All right, take care, everyone. Have a good night. Bye.